Hi there, this is OK Tech Video, and uh, today we're going to be reviewing a uh, ASA 5505 uh, configuration uh, file. Uh, this ASA 5505 is configured with the 8.2 uh, version of code, um, which is very similar to anything between 8.2 to 7.0 or so. Uh, 8.3 is a little bit different in the adding configuration, so that's important to note. Um, so to start out with, uh, we have the uh, interface VLAN configurations. On an ASA 5505, it uses uh, VLAN configurations for the inside and outside interfaces. So we have an uh, inside interface here that's configured for VLAN 1 as by per default. Um, and this particular device, that's the internal IP address. Um, and uh, on the outside interface, we have a VLAN 2. Um, this is a made up IP number, just to let you know. And uh, so as the actual interfaces, there's eight interface port, inter eight interface ports on the 5505. And so port 0 here is being configured to be applied to VLAN 2. So that means port 0 is the outside interface. And all the other ones don't specify, which means that they are configured for VLAN 1. Um, the, re the going down in the configuration, we have the access list configuration, which is referenced by a number of things throughout the configuration. Um, both for the uh, access in and uh, NONAT configurations and tunnels and things of this nature. Um, we have uh, the NAT configurations here, static. We have a static one-to-one -one NAT configured. We also have global outside uh, PAT configured uh, using these two commands. Um, the outside here is the command that sets the default gateway, uh, which routes the traffic out to the ISP. Um, this particular device also was configured for routing to another inside network um, through another insert internal router. Um, this is actually, uh, when we do a configuration, this particular router firewall was configured for client VPN access. It was configured both for uh, IPsec client VPN access and SSL VPN. Uh, client access using the Cisco AnyConnect client. So the pertinent information for that is stored in a number of places in the configuration. Um, one of the places of the configuration is setting up the uh, authentication method for those particular VPN users. So the VPN users connect and they get a prompt. Um, they need to authenticate. Um, I've got this firewall set to authenticate them to Active Directory. So in this particular setting right here is what set it is what this is what points it to the Active Directory domain controller, um, and then has some information on how to connect to the domain controller, and then it queries the Active Directory domain and uh, authenticates the user as needed. Um, the CryptoSec uh, information section. Uh, this is the VPN section. Uh, this particular firewall was configured for a site-to-site -site VPN tunnel. Um, right here under the map outside map 10 um, and uh, the settings which enable the IPsec uh, VPN client uh, are right here and here and here so much. Um, this is a standard uh, crypto is a camp configuration setting up some policies for VPN connectivity. Um, we also have, uh, when it comes to the SSL VPN configuration, uh, we have Web VPN configured, uh, which is configured to uh, enable web logon into the device and then automatically download the AnyConnect client only. This particular device only had the uh, AnyConnect Essentials license, so it could not allow VPN Web VPN sessions, but it could allow logon into the device via the external interface, login and then uh, have the AnyConnect client automatically downloaded. So that, uh, this command here, automatically configured the device to, to download the VPN client. And this uh, image file was stored on the flash configuration of the device. Um, so the group policies, we have group policies that we have to have configured for VPN users. Uh, we have two that are configured, one for IPsec users and one for SSL VPN users. Um, the IPsec users does things like set the DNS server configuration, sets a timeout, specifies the protocol, which is important for this, is the set as IPsec. It also configures a split tunnel configuration um, so that the traffic, only the traffic that needs to go to the remote network 
is routed through the VPN tunnel and not all of the traffic. If you do not have a split tunnel configured, then you will route all of your network traffic through the VPN tunnel, and that will cause your remote VPN client to be unable to communicate to anything else, including the internet. Um, the domain configuration, the default domain configuration, is for a convenience factor, and this uh, is setting it to allocate one IP address, which this actually references the VPN pool setting that's further up in the config. Um, the additional side-by-side -side configuration that you have to have for VPNs is tunnel groups. So you've defined uh, some parameters in the group policy. You also have to define them in the tunnel group. And then the tunnel groups have to point to the group policies. So I have here, for example, the SSL VPN users. And it references the what IP pool to pool to authentic, what IP pool to allocate IP numbers from, what to authenticate the users to, uh, to the Active Directory configuration above, and uh, what uh, group policy settings to use for these users. Um, we also have the uh, tunnel group configuration here for the site to site VPN tunnel, and the tunnel group configuration here for the IPsec users, IPsec VPN client. This is an old style Cisco VPN client. Um, and uh, the rest of the settings are pretty generic. We have uh, some specs that are set and configured, and um, that's about it. I think that it's important to realize that uh, as you look through a configuration, that uh, things that are referenced in one place um, actually are pointed to another place. So um, the IACL outside configuration here um, is only enabled if there's an equal command here that applies the out ACL outside interface to the ACL-outside to the outside interface so that traffic is filtered through that ACI. Uh, also another important to note when you're working with VPNs you have to disable matting for traffic going to and from the remote networks and that is accomplished with this NAT inside zero command. So uh, that's it for this overview and uh, we can go into more detail uh, on a later video. Thanks very much. Bye.